in this presentation I will introduce the work from IOC UNESCO in uh, for the LME component of the Transboundary Water Assessment Program. Uh, the TWAP, as we call it, is the full project of the Transboundary Water Assessment Program funded partially by GF and uh, co-financing from other sources. Uh, as you see there, the implementation phase is from April 2013 to March next year. And the objectives for the general objectives of the project is a global baseline assessment for the status and changing conditions of the transboundary waters, systems resulting from uh, human and natural cases. And this will allow GF, but also all the policymakers at, and international mm -hmm. organizations to set uh, science-based uh, priorities for financial resources allocation. But as well for the institutional arrangement of, for conducting the periodic uh, monitoring of the transboundary water systems to allow as well GF and uh, other uh, and others to track the results and the interventions. As you see in the graph, uh, there are five different components: the large marine ecosystem, the open ocean, both of them uh, led by IOC UNESCO. The third one is aquifers, led by our colleagues from UNESCO uh, from the water uh, hydro hydrological uh, program, the lakes that are led by the International Lake Association, and the river basins from UNEP, uh, uh, from UNEP as well. Uh, yeah, uh, the global ocean, uh, coastal ocean, the global coastal ocean is uh, divided into 66 different large marine ecosystems. Uh, which are natural regions uh, of coastal and ocean enclosing waters uh, from river basins and estuaries uh, to the seaworth boundaries of continental shelves and margins of coastal currents and water masses. This is the definition of the Ken Sherman, our colleague from NOAA. And uh, as you see there, the distribution of the LMEs, and the green ones are those uh, LMEs that are funded by Jeff, and uh, covers 200,000 square kilometers around the globe, and uh, or more, and the natural boundaries are based on four ecological criteria: bathymetry, hydrography, productivity, and, trophic and trophically related populations. Uh, from our uh, new section in IOC, marine policy and regional coordination, we are in charge of uh, finding the most appropriate decision tools, as I mentioned in the other presentation, in order to improve the integrated coastal area management and marine special planning, but also the large marine ecosystem. Uh, the activities that we are doing is developing, compiling different data sets. We will see that uh, the different partners that are integrating our group are uh, uh, relevant partners around the globe, uh, compiling information from productivity, fisheries, pollution and health, socioeconomic and governance. This information will uh, provide indicators, indicators in terms that to support the um, global comparative assessment that the LMEs re uh, for the LMEs uh, in terms of the spatial uh, distribution and uh, global coverage of these indicators. Not all of them are covering all the activities that we want because there are some, uh, especially some in fisheries or socioeconomic that the information is not available, but the governance itself, uh, at the end, will try to uh, sum up all of this information and provide uh, relevant products. All this information will be, both data reporting indicators will be available in our website that will be available at the end of the, this year. The target audience, uh, while well, the principal target is Jeff, as I mentioned, all the potential, uh, potential users of the TWAP results will include the World Ocean Assessment that I will introduce later, and the regional sea programs. Uh, as I mentioned, the data will be available to users and uh, it can be downloaded from the website. The indica indicators and baselines may be relevant as well for environmental assessment and planning at regional uh, sea scale. And uh, mm, this work can facilitate the incorporation of transboundary consideration into the world ocean assessment and the regional sea perspective. And uh, the potential inputs for CMA2. I have to say that the uh, partners compile data into their own databases. We have found that uh, the data 
physically stored is not shared into the project uh, database for the moment, but it will hopefully it will be at the end of this uh, year. And the data dates, if are not connected to this shared information system, will not be uh, ensured after the project. Uh, regarding data analysis and results, the creation of these socioeconomic indicators to analyze socioeconomic aspects for modeling future approaches and comparison of LMEs could be uh, a nice input for the CMA2. And uh, the data viewer and the comparison tools that will be available as well uh, for the 66 LMEs will also be very helpful, especially for this combination of the CMA2 and the Caribbean uh, Large Marine Ecosystem uh, Initiative. And uh, as well, the transboundary governance, as I mentioned, even if not all the data sets and not all indicators are completed, this uh, transboundary governance uh, strategy will also facilitate uh, some uh, the activities in the context of the CMA2 as well. More information, you can find it in the website of the JEF projects, jeftwap.org, and in our website, uh, institutional website of IOC. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. Any other questions?